The Secrets of Movies and TV Shows is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Movies and TV Shows. Today we are discussing the recent Netflix adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender. Are they still calling it books? I, I missed that. Is it book one, water, or is it just season one? I think it's just seasons. Okay. <laughs> I'm Thomas Salerno, and joining me today on the panel are Patrick Mason. Hello there, Pat. Howdy, Tom. And Catherine Laffrey. Hi, Catherine. Hello. And Jeff Hecker. Hey there, Jeff. Hey, Thomas. Be sure to follow us on the Secrets of Movies and TV Shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, or your podcast app of choice. And you can also follow the show on the StarQuest YouTube channel. And please share the podcast all around with your friends. And you can find the StarQuest on social media. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash StarQuestMedia or on X where we are at SQPN or on Instagram where we are at StarQuest Network. Spoilers are on for an adaptation of an almost 20-year-old show now. But I, <laughs> there still are people who have not seen the original. I was just talking to a friend a few hours ago who said they have still not seen the original series. So, so spoilers are on. And in case anyone <laughs> was interested, the Netflix, this Netflix adaptation has been renewed for at least another two seasons. I don't know if that means they're going to keep this format of eight episodes or maybe they'll go longer and split them up. Who knows? But this first season of Avatar The Last Airbender pretty much covers book one of the original animated series. So the plot is generally the same. But we have a plot summary here. So Aang, the avatar from the Air Nomad people, flies from his home on the eve of a Fire Nation attack. The Fire Nation seeks to remove the Avatar from their path so that they can conquer the world. 100 years later, Aang is found frozen at the South Pole by siblings Sokka and Katara of the Water Tribes. He is awakened in time to face Prince Zuko of the Fire Nation, who is banished by his father to find the Avatar. Aang and his friends escape and travel towards the Northern Water Tribe, so that Aang can learn waterbending. They meet various different characters along the way before arriving at the North in time to defend it from a fleet of Fire Nation ships. The Moon Spirit is killed, and Aang takes the form of its kindred spirit, the Ocean, to defeat the invasion, and Princess Yue sacrifices her life to return the Moon Spirit to life. The season ends with Zuko's sister Azula conquering the Earth Kingdom city of Omashu, as the Fire Sages inform Fire Lord Ozai that Sozin's Comet is approaching, which will give added power to the Firebenders. So, I guess starting off, we'll just go around the, I almost said around the table here, but around the panel, what did you guys think of this Netflix series as an adaptation of our beloved animated show? Catherine, we'll start with you. I actually enjoyed it. Once I stopped watching it, expecting the animated show, and I just was like, wait, this is like watching a movie of a book I really love. And then I loved it. And it was just like, yeah, this works. How about you, Pat? I, yeah, very similar experience. I think it was about episode five where I just, I just said to myself, it's not the animated show. It's not going to be the animated show. Start watching it for itself which is roughly about the time my children started watching it with me and constantly reminded me that it was not the (laughs) anime. Great. Yeah, there was a little bit of cognitive cognitive dissonance going on there with me trying to pull those apart. But once I I started watching it just for itself, it's a really good show, I think. I, I think they did an amazing job with the Avatar's journey and with the the horrors of war and its effect on people all around and it because the format they chose so you have eight roughly hour-long episodes instead of was it 24 half an hour episodes you have only about 16 half, half an hour episodes worth of stuff so in comparison there's a lot more time they could spend in the animated show 
on kind of the silly stuff. And so there wasn't nearly as much silly stuff, which was sad in, in some ways, but also it that stuff didn't really move the plot much. <laughs> so it was nice from that perspective. But I yeah, I really enjoyed it once I started thinking of it as its own thing and not comparing it to the original. What are your thoughts, Jeff? Yeah, so I really enjoyed the season. Definitely it started out, I think, stronger. Or the the earlier couple, first couple episodes were stronger. And then it, when they started trying to cram two or three animated series episodes of material into one one episode of this, it, I, I still liked it, but it wasn't, I think it suffered a little bit from that, from trying to compress things, which we'll get into. But by the end of it, I definitely really enjoyed the, the finale of it. And I thought they nailed Iroh. I like the other characters. I thought the characterization was good, but I think Iroh was spot on. And I like Zuko too, but Iroh, I love the actor. I'm going to, if I forget his name wrong, I apologize, but Paul Sun, he's been on a ton of stuff recently, but just, I loved him as Iroh and Daniel Day Kim was great as Ozai too. Yeah. It, it was, if there's any lost fans out there, there was a lot of lost actors who were in this, uh, Admiral Zhao was miles strong huh. from lost, but and of course, Daniel Day Kim, but yeah, I love the season. I'm excited to see what they do next. And I, I knew going in it wasn't going to match the animated, and so that kind of set my expectations was if it if I have fun with it, then that's all that matters. And I did have a lot of fun with it. And I think it, and like I said, I think it did improve by the end. The middle kind of dragged a little bit, but I think that was just they were trying to compress things too much. So I hope in the future seasons that they, I hope they give them more episodes than eight because there's a lot to cover <laughs> for the remaining two two books but yeah overall i really enjoyed it yeah my impressions of it were very positive my expectations were rock bottom so that may have helped i (laughs) I had absolutely no expectations mostly because i don't know i didn't see the point at first of this show like why remake a, a classic like this but i liked the trailers so that got me interested And once I started watching, I was just like, like, okay, the opening episode, especially those first few scenes, were a bit off-putting to me because I felt like the they were really hamming it up. Some of those actors, (laughs) and especially I felt in that first episode, the overacting was really turned on to eleven. And but either either the actors got more comfortable in their roles or the overacting grew on me because after a while I, <laughs> I stopped caring and I actually like really started enjoying that because it almost seemed like they were trying to portray, if this makes sense, animated characters in live action. Like the, the overacting mm-hmm. worked. In, in, I, it just felt like I had a lot of fun with this show. I guess that's my bottom line. I had a lot of fun pretty much from the end of the first episode on. I was hooked. I wasn't expecting it to be the animated show. Like the time compression didn't really bother me. I was actually surprised how much they were able to to cram into (laughs) some of those episodes. And somehow I just thought it worked. I just thought it was really good from, I enjoyed it from beginning to end. And I'm glad that my, initial kind of, oh, this is going to be a train wreck was not that I enjoyed it because I had seen on the, it, it's the internet. So it's all the review. Some reviews were panning it, but I feel like part of the problem, and maybe I can get your guys thought on this. Besides, like, I don't know exactly who the audience for this show is. Who is this show for? Because it's not for super fans who will nitpick every little change that's made. But it's not really for newcomers because I would just tell newcomers watch the original show first. But I, so I don't know who it's for, except for I guess it's for me. I really liked it, but <laughs> yeah, I think it's for us. I think it's really like <laughs> for the four the of non, us. Yeah, the people who didn't become super fans, but who also enjoyed, you know, the original. Yeah, I never saw the show as a child. I in our last time we discussed the original show, I saw it first probably when I was I think twenty probably twenty seven or so, somewhere around there, twenty six, twenty seven. And so I only saw it as an adult, even though it can came out at the tail end of my, my high school and early beginning of college time. But I've seen it through multiple times and this got me 
excited to rewatch the original show leading up to whenever we get the next season in probably three or four years, as long as it'll take. So, but yeah, I think it's for people who are more casual fans, or at least people who can have fun with, you know, if you recognize this as an adaptation, it's mm-hmm. not going to be the original. It's not going to do it exactly like that. It's not going to be as good as that. At least for me, it wasn't as good. You can have fun with it. I think, yeah, Catherine, you said it best where it's like seeing a movie adaptation of your book. And I love the Lord of the Rings movies and being on the secrets of Middle Earth, but I love the book. It's not going to match the book, but it's a great, it's fun to see it on screen in a live action kind of way. The best thing was, come on, Appa looking all fluffier. <laughs> I was like, that's <laughs> awesome. But I think it was, it was refreshing that they didn't try too hard to act like the animated characters because I wouldn't mm-hmm. want to see a live action person being that animated. So I'm glad Aang wasn't as goofy. Yeah, some people are saying he could have had more of his childlike qualities and not be so serious and traumatized. But the way they opened the show and watching someone get burned to death, you knew it couldn't be as casual as the animated series. Yeah, because in the animated, you don't ever see, I, I don't believe you ever see the Fire Nation attack on the Air Nomads. I think it's just, you see the aftermath of it. And when they, when Aang comes back 100 years later and sees the destruction left behind, you get a little bit of that when the Air Nomad is attacking, like the, which whichever one of the Air Temples was inhabited by those, like, by the machinists and his son and that group of people. So you do see that, but it wasn't, yeah, it was definitely pretty brutal to see on screen, but it also, I think it worked to see that because it, it really sets you up of, if you don't know much about the show or anything about the original, like it, it puts you in right away that the, the fire nation's bad. Um, or yeah. at least the, the leadership is bad. Although in that first, in those opening scenes, I found myself laughing at stuff I should not have been laughing at because some of the death scenes were really over the top, over the top. Yeah. unintentionally <laughs> funny. Like people were just like, ah, is they're getting burned up? And I, like, I know I shouldn't be laughing at this, but like, <laughs> it was just, it, but like I said, that I felt like that problem got less as the episodes went on. One thing I was thinking of listening to you guys talk about your reactions to it is that I felt like for me watching this show was like getting reacquainted with old friends. That's what it felt like. I watched Avatar The Last Airbender when it came out. I've rewatched it a couple of times since, but I not recently. Even when we did the original, we covered the original series on this show – I was doing all that from memory. I didn't have, <laughs> I didn't wa- rewatch the entire series again. So, it, but this, it was like meeting old friends again. Like I felt that in most ways they nailed a lot of the characters. They were different, but they were still the same. Like I, I, I did that thing like, okay, if I really like a show, I start talking to it. If I'm watching it by myself, I start talking to the characters And I was doing that, so that meant I was enjoying it. Especially, I want to say, especially during the parts with King Boomy. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I love that guy. I thought thought he did great. Oh, yeah. That was perfect. I like it. (laughs) Whenever he would say something that was, like, rude but also funny, I would just go, thanks, Boomy. If, if (laughs) if, If I'm doing that, if I'm talking to the characters, it means I'm invested. (laughs) <laughs> and it was like meeting old friends again. So, yeah. Oh, I'm sure there's a lot of good boomy memes out there now because that was just <laughs> some great line drops. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I will say I was a little bit distracted by boomy and Paku. Like, they're, I guess the makeup didn't quite, it just wasn't quite there. And so, I don't know. It just was a little bit of, it's clearly not an old guy who's doing this, which I mean, mm-hmm. ma- makes sense because boomy is a big muscular guy. And, but just it just looked a little bit off, so that kind of I didn't get into as into the boomy stuff, and I didn't really like that they made him been like getting mad at Aang because that's such a thing from the that's a thing from the uh, animated is that Aang remembers his old friend and mm-hmm. Boomy's just messing with him the whole time and, and is they're happy to be reunited. But this, but I get that they wanted to tweak it a little bit. It's just those couple of things that at least and that maybe that's why I didn't enjoy the Omashu episodes as much. But. They were definitely leaning in to 
how much the world has been affected by Aang being gone for a century. They bring it up several times. And I do like how later, in a later episode, when they're in the spirit world and Aang has his reunion with Monk Gyatso, which oh, I think was completely original. I don't that remember was... that from the series at all. But I yeah. loved that, yeah, especially that with Gyatso saying, if you were there, you couldn't have saved us. In fact, you just would have died along with us. So stop feeling guilty about yeah. not being there. Let it go. And I think Aang learns that in the animated, but it, it, it's over the course of time and not with a literal reintroduction to his old friend. Yeah, but I did love that bit. And I knew as soon as in that episode when Aang left Gyatsu's hut, I was like, he's never going to see him again. Like Gyatsu's moving on to the whatever the next phase of existence is for in this world. Yeah, that was really cool to see him and Gyatsu get that moment because you see a little bit more buildup in the animated. So it was cool that you, you get it more after the fact here, but you still get it in, in some way. Speaking of characters, wh- which did you guys think were the strongest characterizations in this series compared to the, the animated original and, and which didn't land for you? Sokka was spot on. Yeah, so that was Sokka. That was perfect. I know like my daughters were actually a little disappointed that he wasn't as sarcastic because they said that was like the one little bit they watched. He's not Sokka enough. And I'm like, okay, whatever. It's there. But it's like, I get what you mean. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's a little my more real the world. Thing. They loved super sarcastic, sexist Sokka. It's just, <laughs> it worked. Cause then when he gets put in his place by the, the warriors, it's okay. He gets it. But and then Uncle I want to see if next season they'll have him get high on cactus juice. I wonder if they'll. Come <laughs> <back>. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was bummed they were sucking on frogs in the the oh, spirit. Yeah. Frozen frogs. <laughs> he but, does yeah. say when they're in the spirit world, is that a frog or a frog thing? Yeah. <laughs> um, they they could have showed it. I don't know why they didn't yeah. show it, but it was that was still a funny gag. So yeah, you, you felt Sokka worked. Oh, yeah. The one who didn't work for me was, oh, my gosh, what's his name? The sister of Katara. Azula. Azula Azula did not work for me. Hmm. And as an actress, she did a great job, but she can't change the fact that she has a very soft, sweet face. (laughs) I'm sorry. She has an absolutely adorable round face and she can play as mean as she wants. And she did a good job as an actress. But. They needed someone that had harder features in her face. Face that could cut your face. See, I thought it worked because he's because she is so sweet and unassuming, like looking at her, and then but she's Azula. Yeah, (laughs) she's still yeah. So it worked for me seeing because I I didn't recognize her at first when in the episode she shows up and where she's. I guess the, there's rebels in the Fire Nation that want to get into the palace and kill the Fire Lord because that's going to go really well with all the, <laughs> as, with, with all the, the fire the, around. Yeah, <laughs> but, but yeah, and then you, you turns out it's Azula. But I thought she worked pretty well. But I guess for me, the like I've already said, but Iro and Zuko, especially Iro, were just great. Like I really felt their relationship, and because Iro's he's one of my favorite characters in the original, and I'm glad they didn't try to the actor didn't try to do the same kind of accent that the original Iroh had. It was a much more natural, I'd hate to say American, but it was at least in the English version that I watched, a very American, maybe a little bit tinge of aristocracy type of accent. But I thought he he worked. And, and seeing some of the additional scenes with him, and like you see him and Zuko at his son's funeral, because you don't see that in the animated. You get a little bit like of, of an homage to that later, but... Like you get that. That was my that favorite scene. Oh, it was great. That was great. Yeah. And then you actually get to see Iro join. Like the when Zuko's leaving on the ship, Iro just show up with him and, and all just, the they, tea I need. Yeah. <laughs> and they just nailed him with. He's always wanted to play pie show and drink tea and <laughs> not really evil like some of the other Fire Nation people. He's mm-hmm. he's trying to be friendly to the Avatar and and others. So but yeah, I. And I thought Zuko did a good job too, so I'm excited to see where that how how he grows up into the the next few seasons of the role. But yeah, at least for my, for me, Iro was tops. But you, Pat, favorite adaptations? You know what? What one of the reasons I I really liked the show is because it didn't alter the characters in any sort of dramatic way. Something that if you really want to cheese me off as an adapter, 
it's changed one of the characters. Like my only problem with the Dune 2 was Chani. And so this, they didn't do anything that was egregious to any of the characters. In fact, they tried to do them as, as great as they could. I really liked this version of Aang. And I love the cartoon version of Aang because he's just so lovable. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I love this. I really loved how this Aang had to grow and grow as the Avatar and into this new world and, and into his friends. And bringing that whole juxtaposition between him and the other Avatars is it constantly telling him he's got to do all of this on his own and the reality of it being like he can't. He just, he doesn't, he's not there. And eventually so he decides not to, which is nice. <laughs> the one, interesting enough, the one character I liked probably the least was Iroh because... This was very much, I think, this was very much third book Iroh and uh, not first book Iroh. First book Iroh is very comical. He's He is silly and he's all about the food and the tea and they do that a little bit. But this Iroh in this book is really serious. And don't get me wrong, I love third book Iroh. It's a, it's a different face than you see in, in first book Iroh. So that... I just, I just wanted him to be a little more silly. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I also really liked Aang in this. I've never seen this child actor in anything else. But man, he, he nailed Aang, I thought. It's the perfect balance of a kid and also the kind of serious themes of trauma and loss and bearing the weight of the world on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. I just thought... It was a, it was really fantastic because he still had that joy of mm -hmm. Ang. Almost whenever Ang was on screen on this, I was smiling usually, unless it was a sad seed with Ang. But like <laughs> most of the other time, I was smiling. He just had that joy that I just felt was so integral to the character. I, I really felt, yeah, that they nailed Ang, and that was so important because if you don't. He can end up come becoming like Ang in in the third book, it, like in the play that they saw. Because the, the danger with most of these characters is that they could become caricatures, like in the play that they see. But I really don't feel like that happened for anybody in this. I and in fact, yeah, there's one character that went over the top in the live action, and that was the face stealing spirit. Oh, that Co thing was creepier in live action style. Okay, like, somehow. Oh, it was <laughs> That's going like, to give me oh. nightmares, yeah. Yeah, there were a couple of times, yeah, he's like, I don't really want to rewatch this scene just because of the way that <laughs> the faces would change in the eye. It was like, oh. Yeah, ugh. Oh, it's, no. like, it's like a blinking <laughs> eyeball, but there's it's like faces. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, can we not do this, please? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. No, I like the portrayal of the spirit world, at too. I liked how disorienting it is for mortals. I, I, I thought that was cool. Oh, and freaking Wan Shi Tong. You, <laughs> like, <laughs> I almost feel, okay, maybe it's a little nitpick. I thought he was not mean enough to them. <laughs> Because if I remember Wan Shi Tong, he's not particularly friendly. He straight up doesn't like humans at all. Yeah, yeah, they did that. They, but this was this wasn't where the humans are coming into his library. Yeah, they I mean, cut. The, yeah, because one of the thing in the animated is is he didn't want humans coming in and using knowledge to destroy each other and destroy and destroy the spirit world or whatever. He was so I think having him introduced here was I did. I was fine with it, but I am excited to see that in live action because I, I think that spirit library is so cool. I would love to just <laughs> go and walk around there for ages and <laughs> read all these ancient texts and things. It, yeah, it occurs to me that that scene was actually a pretty good setup for when they do the spirit library later because they'll, yeah. they'll run into him again. What did you guys think of the visuals of this show? I was just going to say Katara's fight with the waterbender from the south was well done. Mm. I liked how they brought that energy and movement, the water bending. Some of it was a little, eh, too soft. Like early on when she's doing stuff, it just looked like weird little blobs. But then as they got more into the action of things and going to the water benders in the north, that was just fabulous. I loved the visuals of the whole 
city and everything. That was really well done. I think it looked incredible. Um, so yeah, the bending looked great of all the bend, all the different elements bending. I know Oppa wasn't on screen much because I'm sure he was expensive to, to animate and stuff, but Oppa looked good. The, yeah, it all looked really good. So that was, like I said, aside from my nitpicks on the Boomy and Paku's makeup, but that's minor nitpicks, but but yeah, no, it looked great to me. It definitely captured the vibe of the world. There was never a point where I was like, oh, that's fake. That looks fake. No. Yeah, that's water bending. Like water bending's real. And, and that's what yeah, that's what it looks like. That's what earth bending looks like. That's fire bending. That's yeah, it's all good. It they did. So I, I think they did a pretty excellent job seamlessly incorporating the visual and the uh practical effects and then the CGI, which I'm sure was I'd be interested to see how much practical they used in the bending stuff, if they did any, or how they pulled that off. Because CGI really does really well if it has something to build on top of. And so I want to see if there's a making of and go watch that. But they did a really good job with it. I felt the environments were very strong. And I love the kind of wide shots of like cities and stuff. Mm-hmm. And like the air temples, I know Mashu and the Northern Water Tribe and stuff. Because that really made me feel like, yeah, I'm in a fantasy world. This is great. Like, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed a lot of the costuming and the props and everything. It all felt like it was in the world. I, I thought the bending looked really good. Honestly, I, I think the one thing that didn't land for me, and for me personally, this was pretty important, was I actually felt mo- most of the creature CGI was weak. To me, they just looked fake. And I love creatures, and I love these creatures. I love the – I actually thought there weren't enough. They, they didn't yeah. show enough varieties of the weird animals in this universe. But, I yeah, I felt that – I noticed that they kept Appa in the dark a lot, I think, to, so that you didn't notice how sketchy his CGI is and – I also felt that thing that the bounty hunter rides, I never remember what it is called. It's an ant oh. or it's like a mole or something. Like a- it, yeah, it, it's got a – but it, it's one of the few creatures in the universe that has like its own unique name, but I just can't remember what it is. But yeah, that that did not look real to me at all. But really like I could just look past that because I even though I'm, I love creature stuff – I was more invested in the plot and the characters and what's going on that I could forgive the visuals when I thought they weren't up to par. And also, I wasn't expecting a Hollywood budget anyway. So they, I they had a pretty that. high budget, though. I think from what I remember, it was like around like 10 million an episode or seven or eight million, something pretty mm. high, which is a lot for a streaming a streaming show. But yeah, yeah, they I just was lost in the. I, didn't, I wasn't really pausing to like look at the CGI of the animals, so I was just lost in the story and, and what was going on. So, because that was one thing like I was concerned about when I started is if if it's the CGI isn't up to up to snuff, it's gonna look it's gonna pull me out of it like, if I can really notice it. And I really didn't notice any. I, I just was aware that oh yeah, that's a CGI thing, and but it wasn't that big of a deal to me, or it didn't pull me out at all. I thought the ship scenes were really well done. And like yeah. on the water and the big ocean scenes. And Paul Lee actually was interviewed and he said that there was one scene that they were filming in the volume. And they said that the constant motion of the background around the solid deck that they were filming on was enough <laughs> to make half the cast sick. Oh, they no. Got, they got <laughs> seasick. seasick. Wow. That would be really hard to be standing there. You're on a solid deck and have everything else moving. So. Fire Nation and and ships, that reminds me, the one character who I thought was, unless I'm totally misremembering, the one character who I thought was significantly very different from his animated portrayal was Zhao. Like, he seemed a lot more silly in this, and he seemed, as Iroh calls him, a a very small man. Like, I I like, it was different, I liked it. But I was wondering why they went in this direction for Zhao. Yeah. He, he reminds me of Zhao when he kills the moon spirit mm-hmm. in the animated. Yeah. is like crazy go nuts at that point. And it's like they just they took that version and said, that's Zhao. 
and we're going to trace them across all of it. Um, that was the feeling I got, which is why it didn't bother me. But yeah, you're right. He is far more unhinged from the get-go than he is uh, in the animated show. I can see then why he's working with Azula, since they're both pretty unhinged <laughs> people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I liked, I think my favorite thing about this version of Zhao was that he has a secretary who follows him around recording his speeches <laughs> and everything he says. Don't write he, that. Don't write that. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I, I oh, thought that was great. Yeah. That was really good. I yeah, like the development of the crew that yeah. Iroh had and just to get their backstories. Oh my gosh, that makes so much sense to me now. Because I always wondered, why would these guys even go off with a banished prince in the first place? So I thought that was really neat to have that tie-in with these were the men he saved from being sacrificed in battle. Gives it a lot more depth. Like they're not yeah. just random Fire Nation soldiers anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then because in the animated, in that one that they get that when or they make the crew loyal to Zuko when there's a big storm and Zuko's trying to pursue Aang and like he does, and instead of continuing to chase the avatar he zuko recognizes okay i need to save the ship and keep my crew alive so i think that was a a melding of that that idea yeah i like the crew and his kind of lieutenant i forget his name but his lieutenant that was his kind of aide aide there so yeah it'd be cool to get some further like it these that's what i liked is these cool developments that we didn't get in the animated like the like Mm -hmm. i said the his iroh's son's funeral and joining the crew and kind of comforting zuko after the agni kai where he was burned and stuff like a really great little it was cool to get these little moments added in i also liked that they show they really show ozai the manipulator and pitting his two children against one another very early on yeah because you don't see ozai in the first season in the animated he you get like a a a silhouette of him at, at the very end of it but I think with this, you have to show him from the beginning. But yeah, I, I love Daniel Day Kim. So seeing him as Ozai was great. Yeah, I'm trying to remember like how many times we see Ozai and Iroh talk in the animated one. I don't know if it actually happens like where they just have a conversation and you get that. It's interesting to see that sort of you get just so much more. Ozai. They made him super evil still, but they and they did it in a different way. Instead of him just being super evil, he's now still super evil. But he's <laughs> right in a more realistic fashion. I don't know. <laughs> I'll be interested to see if they take him all the way to. I'm just gonna burn the rest of the world. Um, yeah. And if they do, how they get there? Yeah, yeah. He, he's he's got to get to his like Phoenix King stage where he's just like, ah the heck with it. <laughs> Let's just burn everything down. I think the comet will have something to do with it. Going mad with the power that that kind of confers on firebenders. And yet th- there were some pretty intense sequences. Like uh, d- despite like my initial dissonance in the first episode where I thought some of the deaths were unintentionally funny. Like later on though, like they – and going back and finding the charred remains of his best friend – Monkeyazzo and just the way they talk in this show about how war affects people, I felt was very well handled. Yeah, and I think like thinking about the last episode where they're fighting off the where the Northern Water Tribe is fighting off the Fire Nation, and some of the young like Water Tribe, some of the young Waterbenders who were sent to Tav's Katara tell them what to do. Like the main one, he he unfortunately dies in the battle and that's something you don't see in the animated. So you definitely get that cost of war um, right there. And I, I want to say that I think the chief's son also, or not his son, but the guy who was going to marry UA, yeah. I think he dies as well. He had a great last stand actually. Yeah. I thought that was great. Yeah. They did a really good job with those characters and just the depth, the little extra bit of depth. I think that's the only way you could do it was with live action to have that little extra depth like that. That was good. Did anyone guess that the fox was UA? I did not. No. The second time. I caught the cues the second time. It was just okay. like, okay. Then I, yeah. Got I like that idea that she can, since she's essentially half spirit, 
herself, she can cross over into the spirit world and to have her kind of meet Sokka for the first time in the spirit world. I, I felt that was, that was an interesting. It was a good change. I liked it. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that they're meeting in the kitchen at the big dinner. <laughs> Just a neat little like location change and to make her a little less princessy and more real. And she's using her water bending to make ice cream. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I don't think she's a, I don't think in the animated she's a bender or at least it's never shown one way or the other. So that was a cool little ad that she's a bender, which would make sense if she's the chieftain's daughter. Cause the, the chief, most likely the chief is one of the most prominent benders like in the fire nation. And also if she wasn't, she, I think would become one after having like part of the moon spirits life force. Yeah, that's true. Put into her. Yeah, lights me the, the spirits Angzilla at the oh, end. Yeah. yeah. That was great. <laughs> yeah. My kids were like, it's Godzilla. Immediately. It's the little fins came the up. Fins and I was like, and yep, these yep. crackling blue and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Like, yeah. I was waiting for him to discharge a blue <laughs> beam from his mouth. Unfortunately, that did not take place. Yeah. But I think that would have been too on the nose. I feel like that would have been too on the nose, though. But uh, man, I guess it didn't hit me in the animated version when he's completely lost inside the ocean spirit. How many people are killed in that rampage, the Fire Nation people? Mm. It seems like in the animated, it feels like less or le- like a lot less. Mm-hmm. And in this one, when he causes the tidal wave and you're like, oh, yeah, that's going to be like all the boats. <laughs> like, yep. Yeah. And he's like picking up one boat and smashing it against another and they both explode. I'm like, all those guys are dead. And it, it, and it's funny, I, I thought afterwards when they're, they're panning over the devastation of the Fire Nation fleet, and I just went, what a waste. In in other words, for the Fire Nation to send. But Ozai, does, in the next scene, Ozai doesn't care. Yeah, literally. literally he's that like, he's just, I did that on purpose. Yeah, yeah. He just wasted <laughs> an entire army. And it reminded me of Hitler throwing away an entire army at Stalingrad just because I don't care, die. I like the scale of this show. I, I felt that it was appropriately pretty big scale. The battles, were, like I said, the environments were just like terrific. And the few little extra people they had in there from the animated that you just had to see again. So, of course, we had Cabbage Man. We knew Cabbage, Cabbage Man was going to be there. My yeah. Cabbage yes. Yes. But the <laughs> best that I was totally not expecting with the way they were mashing things together the moment I heard that little twang and secret yep. tunnel, I was like, oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, so no, but then <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> it was perfect. It was yeah. so perfect. <laughs> They're doomed. They're doomed. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Secret Tom. Yeah, and they were still able to pull that off, even though people were swapped around. Like, Aang was in prison, so he wasn't with them, so they didn't have the almost kiss thing between him and Katara, but... Yeah, they they were still able to to essentially. Yeah, that's what I thought was. I felt with the time compression, I felt they were weaving things together very cleverly. Mm. I didn't feel like it was too rushed. J- Jeff, you probably have a different opinion. Though, yeah, on the time compression. I think it was more of just like the seeing the machinist. I forget his, the character's name from the show, but the machinist who in the show in the animated was the one kind of using the air temple to kind of power these inventions and such. And then Jet and his freedom fighters and Jet's, his swords are, it drew me, it threw me out a little bit because his swords were always goofy in the animated, but you give it a pass because it's animated. But in live action, I was like, his swords are ridiculous. (laughs) There's no, but that's like a real (laughs) kind of weapon. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They actually did a forged in fire episode on those swords and featured animated clips to okay. talk about how they're used. Well, I thought that was like, I thought no way this would work. No way this would actually be done, but all right. I'll have to, I'll have to look that up because I'd be interested. I was, just, but I think it was just, they were trying to do, they were trying to, I'm sure we'll get Jed and the others in the next season. Cause he's a big part of when they go to bossing say, so I get introducing them there, but I just wish they maybe had done a little bit more. Her kind of spent more time with just, I don't think you needed the machinist. I think you could have, done something different there. I don't know. I just thought, I like Danny Pudi as the machinist, and I just felt, I don't know, that was a weird, he's a spy for the Fire Nation, and 
yeah, just, I don't know, it threw me off a little bit, but just the compression overall was like, because in the animated, these are all separate episodes where they're going to a place and they're meeting this group of people, but they combine it all together. And, and maybe if I watch it again, I'll have a different different opinion i just at least initially i was like okay i was excited that the beginning of it and this kind of i guess it it threw me out a little bit and these kind of middle three four five episodes three four and five one thing i thought was interesting was and i don't remember this being brought to the attention of the viewers in the animated series is that in the fire nation We've got a kind of Church of England thing going on where Ozai has apparently declared himself head of the religion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because the clergy, the fire sages, now say that he is this – not only – he's the head of their religion essentially and is the savior and they're no longer loyal to the avatar. They're loyal to the state. I, I think they made the fire sages loyal to the state in the original show, but they didn't they did. stress that Ozai is like <laughs> – Queen Elizabeth the first, like head of the church or something, you know, like <laughs> it, I, I, th- I thought that was interesting because it shows like the the kind of dangers of that, of the state taking over the entire because the Fire Nation is a totalitarian state. So they've taken over the entire apparatus of everything to the point where the people who are supposed to help the Avatar are like, no, we'll help capture you and, and kill you. So <laughs> except for that one guy who I liked who was still loyal. That was cool. Yeah, and that's how it was in the animated. It was, you had the one guy who saved mm-hmm. Aang and brought him to, to where he could commune with Roku. And, and that was one other thing, just thinking about that, kind of reminded me of, is I liked Zuko's had this collection of Avatar artifacts. Because that was something new, I, I believe. He had it on the ship. He had this kind of collection of artifacts from the past Avatars, and he was keeping this detailed kind of journal which because Aang didn't really have any connection to his past or to the other avatars like he found out he was the avatar and he ran away basically because they were going to ship him off to a different air temple away from Gyatsu like, like that this is a way that he can get in touch with his past the past avatars I really liked that they extended his conversation with Zuko after the blue spirit incident Mm-hmm. That surprised me, and I I really loved that the, the that character stuff. Where they're talking about calligraphy brushes, yeah, and stuff that was great. He's like, what does he say? He says a rabbit or what was the other animal? Wolf? Oxtail, ox or yeah, oxtail or ah. rabbit and goat. Yeah, goat. Yeah, I I liked them making that connection because it helps establish the turn that Zuko's going to take in later seasons. Because I think in the animated show. All it is is Aang mentioning his friend Kuzan from the Fire Nation. And then Zuko tries to get him. And then yeah. the scene ends. I, I liked the, this extended version of that. I liked how in the in that fortress, in, in the animated version, I remember Zhao's speech. He was a lot more shouty. And in this, he's more, I don't know what the word is to describe what he was doing, but... It was just weird. He wasn't being like a shouty, megalomaniacal. It, it's like he was more like making a sales pitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're fire, the superior element. I'm just like, huh, this is different. <laughs> I think that's when it really started to sink in, that this Zhao is very different. <laughs> yeah, and firebending is overpowered compared to the other ones. Like, mm-hmm. waterbenders can't just make water. They have to go get it. And earthbenders have to have earth and well, you know air. Fine, whatever. It's everywhere. But like the fire, <laughs> I can just make fire in my hand. Oh come on! <laughs> well, I think that's if you've seen Korra, you learn that the legend of Korra that the fire was a gift from the uh, lion turtles to like the humans didn't have the fire by themselves or didn't create it. So that was like the lion turtle gives you a group fire to go hunting. And then when they come back to the city, they have to give the fire back. Whereas the other elements, I think, were learned naturally from the the waterbenders learned it from the moon. Earthbenders learned it from badger moles, and and airbenders learned it from the from the sky bison. So oh, I think wait. that's kind of how did the dragons fit in from the animated series? I thought the firebenders got the fire from the dragons. At least in Korra, they show that fire was given by these lion turtles. I think the the dragons are like a natural firebender teacher type of thing. But yeah, if you see the, like the flashback episode of Korra, the first avatar you see, they give the, the lion turtles give fire as like a temporary ability to, to whoever's, whoever needs it, mm. but they're supposed to give it back. So, 
Which I guess that makes sense because given what Aang is given the knowledge he needs at the end of the animated series by a lion turtle, he just gifts him the the knowledge of how to defeat Ozai at the very end. Which I love the shout out to the lion turtles when yes. Zhao is going through the papers. It's just a bunch of stuff about lion turtles. <laughs> it's not helpful at all. <laughs> turtles all the way down. The you one turtle I wanted to see was the turtle ducks. <laughs> I was going to mention yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> that would have been cute and simple. Just slap a couple turtle shells on some real ducks. It could have <laughs> Good practical effect, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you guys have any other closing thoughts on the, the series or hopes for the next couple of seasons before we wrap up? I had no idea it was going to be one season and so short. And when it ended, I was like, What? <laughs> This can't be over already. (laughs) So I'm so excited. I just hope they take it all the way through. Yeah, I think that's the idea is that they were – because if you go watch the video where where they announced – because it was Daniel Day Kim giving the news to the rest of the cast. It was funny because he's – I've got some bad – I've got some news. Unfortunately, we weren't renewed for – for season two and the cast is all, oh, but he's, we were renewed for two seasons. And <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I, as far as hopes, I hope they get more episodes than just, they have to do it before too long. Cause these kids are going to like, Aang's going to get grow up <laughs> quickly. Yeah, that's Cause this was like my question. Like how are they yeah. going to do that with, with Aang? Cause this was filmed in the last couple of years and it took a long time for posts. So they're going to have to, they, and they may have already been renewed and started filming. They just worked playing it up for everybody, but yeah, I'm, I hope we just get more episodes and they either split them into seasons of six episodes each or something just to give us just to give us more because it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, overall, I really enjoyed it. And if you like the original, I'll definitely recommend it. Yeah, it's a really good study on both kind of the many terrible effects of war and also the journey, Aang's journey. And we get this part of the journey, which is kind of him coming to grips with, okay, I was gone for a hundred years and all of the terrible things that happened because of that. But also, even if I'd been there, what could I have done? And integrating that and coming to to grips with, okay, these are the avatars and this is who I am and I don't have to be them and I can do this with them. And I suspect, and this is what I remember of the second book, which is it's a lot of training. It's Aang taking up the mantle of, okay, if I'm going to be the Avatar, I've got to learn all these other elements, which I am so looking forward to Toph. Like, I oh, can't yes. Even... <laughs> oh, I and, miss and her. Funny, <laughs> my daughter was like, where's Toph? Why haven't they found Toph yet? I'm like, Toph doesn't come until the second book. I'm just, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, her and the boulder. <laughs> as long as we get him i'll be happy <laughs> and he has to be played by dwayne the rock johnson that's right oh please yes that, that either him funny. or john cena i will take either of them <laughs> yeah i'm excited for that and i'm i was always a big fan of zuko's character arc so i'm really excited to see that play out in live action and yeah, and to get this, basically, I'm just here for all of the fan service that this show is going to provide, seeing stuff, this stuff in live action. I think it's really great. Yeah, I, I think if you're a fan of the original and you haven't seen it for a while and you don't have time to watch all 60, 70 episodes of the original <laughs> series, watch this to, to get your fix. Like I said, for me, it was like meeting old friends again. And it was, I really enjoyed it for that. And I'm just glad I did. I decided to watch it and do this show with you guys, because at first I was, oh, I don't know, but no, nope, you guys forced me to watch it. And I'm <laughs> glad you did because I, I honestly had a blast, <laughs> but we'd love to hear from you, our listeners. What did you think of Avatar, the last airbender from Netflix? You can let us know. You can uh, email us or leave a comment on our Facebook page or on Twitter. And you can comment on our YouTube channel, or you can visit us at our channel at the StarQuest Discord community at sqpn.com slash discord. And we'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons who make this show possible, including Ryan K., David B., Sonia C., Regina C., and Brian B. Their generous donations help us to continue to create the secrets of movies and TV shows and all the shows here at StarQuest. And you can join them 
at sqpn.com slash give. And thanks again to our wonderful panel, Patrick Mason. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me on. And Catherine Laffrey, thank you as well. Thank you. It was good. And Jeff Hecker, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Thomas. And until next time, I'm Thomas Salerno. Thank you for listening to The Secrets of Avatar The Last Airbender on StarQuest. Here's another show on the StarQuest Network you're sure to enjoy. The Secrets of Doctor Who. Find the show wherever fine podcasts are found or at sqpn.com slash Doctor Who. We'd like to thank Patrick McCaffrey of Moonshadow Studios for editing this episode. To have your audio edited professionally and with care, check out more of Patrick's work at moonshadowstudios.biz. That's moonshadowstudios.biz.